Welcome to Gas Laws, the study of the element of the air. And scientists who study gas laws or work with gases, their alphabet is reduced to four letters, P, V, T, and N. So P is for pressure. And pressure is, in one word, collisions. How many collisions are happening? V is for volume, so like in Dr. Seuss book, and volume is the space occupied by the gas. So that is a piece that is very unique about gases. Gases can expand, and then you can contract them, but they'll always take up all the space. So we could take this whole room and take the gases and push them together and push them into this flask, and then when we open it up, they'll expand. T is for temperature. And temperature, in one word, maybe two, is the giggles and the jiggles. So that is the thing that is unique about gases. Gases are giggling and jiggling. They're always moving. They're chaotic. If you want, you can say kinetic energy, capital K, capital E. You can be much more scientific there. Or you can giggle and jiggle and be like a gas. I hope somebody took me up on that challenge. N is for moles, because it is chemistry. And moles is the study of the number of atoms or molecules. So yeah, when we get to the math in class, we're going to get the use of Avogadro's number again. It is a way to relate pressure, volume, temperature with Avogadro's number. So let's walk through some of the history. Now you do not need to know the history. You just have to appreciate it. And to be able to talk about this, a lot of them use pressure, so I want to talk about pressure, because you have the idea of volume, right? Volume is how much space, and giggling and jiggling, I think you've all giggled and jiggled in your life, and counting moles and particles. But pressure, well, you may have collided a lot with people, and right now we keep socially distant, so pressure is low. But the idea of pressure is there is always around us air, and that air is pushing down on us. So this gentleman, Torres Selling, made, I believe it was him, made the first barometer. And I don't remember what he used, but we'll say we used mercury. And you know what? I'm using the green. You can't really see it. So we'll say the mercury is in here. And the air is pushing down on the mercury that's in here. The mercury is a liquid. And the air pushes down on it. And the mercury rises as much pressure as the air is pushing down. And if it is a perfect day at the seaside, it will rise to 760 millimeters of mercury high. And that's where that term comes from. Here we'd say inches of mercury, but 760 millimeters of mercury. This is the same as 760 tor, and those are equal to one ATM. This is considered standard pressure. So the standard number of collisions on a perfect day now, there is also something that you'll notice in your notes that says STP. Well, S is standard, P is pressure, and temperature, giggles and jiggles, is the T. So standard temperature is zero Celsius. Now, it's really warm in here. This is the fifth time I've done this, because none of my demos are working. I feel crushed. And... Celsius, though, studied water, and water is a liquid, and liquids are about flowing and fluidity, and gases are about giggles and jiggles. And so the Celsius scale does not work for gases. Never, ever use Celsius. However, we measure with Celsius, so we have to convert to Kelvin. So Sir Kelvin, from the other side of the channel, he came up with a scale, and he said, what if you had a perfect crystal? So even in solids, there's always a little bit of movement, right? There's always a little bit of giggles or a jiggle. And if you could get to a point where it's not moving at all, he said that was zero Kelvin. And the conversion is zero Celsius is actually 273 Kelvin. A lot of giggles and jiggles are going on at zero. So just imagine 
on a really warm day, how many giggles and jiggles are going on. So we're going to always convert. You always add 273 to the Celsius to change the Kelvin. And we'll see that in class. All right. Zero Kelvin is a theoretic point. It's what would happen. All right. So let's start with Boyle's Law. So Boyle's Law, he studied pressure and volume. So collisions and the space they occupied. And he was really obsessed with marshmallows. So we're going to see if you can see these guys. These are gingerbread peeps. And when I turn on the vacuum, which takes away the pressure, volume went up. And then if I open them up, so I increase the pressure, the volume goes down. It's pretty cool. You can do that again in slow motion. You just go 30 seconds back. All right, so as we decrease the pressure, that was the vacuum. A vacuum means we decrease the pressure. You're going to increase the volume. So when you don't have the collisions happening, when you don't have the air pushing on it, they can expand, take up more space. So as you have decreased the collisions, and the reason the collisions are decreasing, so I think it's, I should explain it the other way, they're going to, um, if, if you give gas particles more space, if you give, think of it like this, you have kids and you suddenly have 10 kids and you're in a little house, you're going to have a lot of collisions. So if you're in a really small space, a lot of stuff's going to happen. And so you move into a mansion, a castle. Let's just think big. So you move into a castle and you each have your own quadrant of the castle. And so you never run into each other because the volume now a lot of volume, so you're not going to be colliding. So they're inverse related. Some places you'll see they'll say like this. The fish means uh, proportionality. So as one goes up, the other goes down. And that's going to get us to our law that we're going to talk about and do some math with. And you're going to love algebra. Absolutely love algebra. Because you, yeah. All right. So the next one was Charles and he was into hot air balloons and hot air balloons sorry I'm looking for my yeah teacher's still here. Sorry. Um, he looked at volume and temperature. And so this was a time when hot air ballooning became a big deal. And so that's my little demo over here. And our balloon, as we heat up the air, we increase the temperature. Not the best setup. But as we increase the temperature, we increase the giggles and jiggles or kinetic energy. And that means they're going to need to expand. Now, there is an assumption here. We're assuming the pressure is constant. So there's no more collisions going on. The exact same number of collisions. So for the exact same number of collisions to happen, if you're giggling and jiggling more, you have to expand and take up more space. So for the pressure to be constant. That was something back with Boyle. In Europe, they don't call it Boyle's Law. They actually call it Marriott's Law because Boyle forgot to say temperature was constant. And so because of that, people in Europe weren't very happy. And so Marriott came out with it like a month later or a year later and said temperature must be constant. And so everybody calls it his law. Robert Boyle has really amazing hair. And so go with Boyle's Law, but you don't have to remember any of the names. All right, Gay Luzak. So we can see our balloon over there is expanding. And if I get brave at the end, I'll try the hot can experiment. All right, so let's talk about Gay Luzak. And this is, this is the bummer, because usually I do a really cool demo here, and it has to do with pressure and temperature. And so the Charles Law says cold, uh, cold balloon, 
on your thing. Uh, and so usually I have liquid nitrogen. And so I can dip a balloon in liquid nitrogen. I get super cold. And so I went and got dry ice. Dry ice became more expensive suddenly. And because it's Halloween season. Um, it turns out it's not cold enough. And so none of my demos have been working. I've been in here for an hour trying to get them to work. Anyway, so with this demo, um, as you decrease the giggles, everything's moving slower. Everything's slower. Now we're assuming N and V are constant. When you see this in the parentheses, you can ignore it, but to explain the relationship of two, you have to assume the other ones are constant. So the volume is fixed and the amount of particles in there are fixed. So if everything's moving slower, so kids are out playing on a playground, you suddenly tell them they have to move slow, you don't run into things as much. And so you're going to decrease the collisions. And what would happen is I would create a vacuum. I'll show you. And so this egg is getting sucked in there. It's actually stuck at this moment. We'll see. How I do. All right, I'm back. You can see if we can get the egg in there. It's a dry ice work. It's pretty cool. So these Charles Law and Gay Luzak's law are direct relationships. So if we look at Gay Luzak's, it would mean that pressure and temperature are proportionately related. Or if we look at Charles, volume and temperature are proportional. So one year I wrote this in the very beginning and the students freaked out and they're like, why do you keep drawing a fish in there? It just means proportional. Well, when we write the laws, if they are, actually let's talk about Avogadro's law. And this one you can do at home. Your teacher's already done it several times. I'm just simply blowing up a balloon. So as you increase the number of moles, they're going to take up more space. So the space occupied. All right. So we have our hot balloon over here. You can see, as we heated it up, it takes up a lot more space. And then I'm gonna put them on ice and we'll see if anything happens. Well, I talk to you about what's going on over here. So these are directly related, moles and volume. What that means is when they are directly related, we talk about them as a ratio. So let's do the pressure and temperature. And we'll do this with the math in class. That pressure, it's just me taking up time to see if we can get the egg in that glass. Pressure over temperature, if we put them as ones, is going to be equal to pressure over temperature of the second set. Now, I'm hoping with this video, a couple of you will go, oh, I see that. And that might help you a little bit with class. And even those of you who are like, I don't know what she just did. At least you've heard it. Or maybe you'll watch the video after class. So if we're talking about volume and temperature, we say V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. So when they have a direct relationship, we write them as a ratio. Here, with pressure and volume, it's an indirect relationship. As one goes up, the other goes down. So remember, as we give it more space, same amount of giggles, they don't run into each other as much. What's going on right now is a lot of people have less giggles too. So there's a couple of variables going on. So this would actually be pressure times volume equals pressure times volume. With moles and volumes, since they were directly related, if we want to bring them in, um, these would be a ratio. As N goes up, V is going to go up. So this ratio has to stay constant. Let's talk about it here with volume. If volume was one to one, and I double the volume, I have to double the temperature too. Double the giggles. So there is something called the combined gas law, where they all come together. And it is P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Physicists came up with this. We're going to write it like that. But, you know, we should bring in the moles. And so the moles would have to go on the level 
that is opposite the volume. Since the volume was on top, the moles would be on the bottom. And so this is our whole combined. And if you make that equal to a constant, you can do it at any set of temperatures and volumes and pressures. And as long as you keep measuring it, you will always end up with R. And when this is rearranged, we get PV equals NRT. So when I started teaching chemistry, two things I remembered from when I'd been in chemistry, Avogadro's number kind of sticks with you. So when your kids and in 20 years, when your kids are at the age and they're learning chemistry, or in 10 years, or, or tomorrow, you'll remember Avogadro's number. And you'll remember Pivner, as everybody calls it. So P is pressure, collisions. So all you remember from this is pressure is collisions, V is the space occupied, and it is our little 30 moles. It's how many moles we have, how many atoms, how many molecules. T is the temperature of the giggles, and R, R is a constant. R. I don't know, super, I don't know why they called it R, but it is R. Um, and I'm going to try these dogs now. Oh, let's look at our egg. So maybe you can see, maybe you can't, but this is getting colder and the egg is going in there. It's kind of like a birthing thing. And Maybe I should say ta-ta for now, in case this demo doesn't work. All right, you guys all send me extra blessings. So gases are actually the element of air, and the element of air is the heart chakra. That's why I'm my heart today. And try it. I've never done this demo. So oh, this one actually worked. Holy moly. All right. So this was our hot air balloon, and I stuck them on ice, and now because everything started moving slower in here, the balloon is getting sucked inside the flask. We'll put it like that, so it looks like it's stuck inside. Um, you didn't see that, right? And so it's pretty cool. If we left it in the cold longer, it probably would work really cool. All right, here goes now. That even has decorative flowers to help me, because I was going to try and freeze them, but works so well. Alright. Oh! Look at that! It worked! <laughs> um, I'm laughing at myself because I'm usually, this is the students are usually standing up cheering me on because I'm doing so amazing with all the demos and there's no liquid nitrogen. Alright, anyway, so you put, it's an empty can, put a little bit of water in there, heat it up so it's boiling. So there's no more liquid in there, but the gas, the can is filled with water vapor. It's called water vapor because it was a liquid that turned into a gas. So basically it's filled with gas and it's really hot gas. So then I turn it upside down in the ice bucket. And so I close it so none of the gas can escape. And the cold makes all the molecules move slower and slower. So the giggles decrease and the volume is going to decrease. Or you could say it's gay luzaks. So everything's moving slower. It's probably actually gay luzaks. So everything's moving slower. And so there's no pressure pushing out on the can. And so the air pressure just whoop, collapses it. So there's actually true stories of uh, boxcars. So the boxcars will go across. Um, Arizona or Nevada and they'll get really hot inside. They're pretty empty and then they pause because it's nighttime and they stop on the tracks and the temperature drops. So during the day it can be like 120 and at night it can drop down to like 50 degrees or 60 degrees and the change in temperature, everything in the boxcar is closed up. The gases are moving slower and so they're not pushing out anymore and so the air pressure just and the whole boxcar collapses. Google it and right, bye bye. If I can get the egg in, I'll start recording again. Bye. She'll be applauding. 
This was heroic for me. It's not stopping. All right, the egg went in, and now the egg is coming out. So I thought it was recording, and for 10 minutes was telling you a story as we were waiting for the egg to come out. And yeah, I hit stop instead of play. All right, anyway, so as this is warming up here, it's pushing the egg back out. So usually this only takes like 10 seconds for the egg gets sucked in. Liquid nitrogen is super cold. And um, yeah, the students are always amazed because they'll be playing with it up there and freezing stuff. And I won't wear gloves. Absolutely, you should. Don't play with liquid nitrogen. When I was in graduate school, I uh, unfortunately stuck my hand in liquid nitrogen. I wasn't, I, I was fast. I'd get the cell cultures out. i put all the gloves on and the tank was empty. And I got my cell cultures. So just like Walt Disney is cryogenically frozen, cell culture stuff is cryogenically frozen. And I took my sample and I went back and I wasn't worried. I put on one of the gloves, but not the other because the tank was empty. And I stuck my hand in, but the liquid nitrogen guy was faster than me and he had looped me. I'm still not sure how he did this, but the tank was now full. And when I stuck my hand in, it went through the glove and my hand was frozen and I dropped my sample. So then I went next door to Betsy and Jane and said, Betsy, I froze my hand. And they're like, oh my goodness, you froze your hand. And I'm like, no, my hand's frozen. There's nothing I can do. It's really frozen. Look, it's coming. And I felt no pain. I felt pain for the first like microsecond when it froze. And then I pulled the glove off and it was just covered with like blisters and stuff. And I looked at it and my hand was just like it is now, except it was frozen. It was stuck and I had no pain. And so I said, but I, I can't close the tank because I dropped my sample and my hand froze. Well, then I went, this is the cool part of the story. I went down the hall and I worked in my left hand and um, to Bob Lefkowitz's lab. Bob Lefkowitz won the Nobel Peace, not Nobel Peace Prize. Oh gosh, he was not a peace man at all. He won the Nobel Prize in chemistry um, like five or 10 years ago for adrenergic receptors. So that's the receptors for epinephrine and stuff. They're the ones for blood pressure and things. And so he was extremely competitive, not a nice man, but he, he worked down the hall from us. He's a lovely man. He's a beautiful man. He was very competitive. He wanted it really bad. And so he got it. Oh, we're getting there. It's getting there. Just keep pushing. Warm the gas particles up. Anyway, um, about a half hour later, my hand started thawing. And I went down the hall. And thankfully, all the doctors I worked with, I should probably get my hand there to catch it so it doesn't fall on the floor and then I have a bigger mess to clean. Anyway, uh, all the doctors were at a meeting. And so it was only the techs there. And so somebody had an aloe vera plant, like Debbie did. And they just started ripping that plant apart and covering my hand because I was in pain. And this is at Duke. And so Betsy went and got some Jack Daniels that was in her locker and gave me a shot of it. And somebody gave me a stick to chew on so I wasn't screaming and stuff. And all I got was one little blister. I think when I pulled the glove off and I saw my hand covered, it looked like the elephant man's hand. Um, I think I saw the potential. Keep pushing! And... Anyway, um, the doctors came back at that point and they were like, oh wow, if we'd been here, you would have lost your hand because we would have tried to do all this crazy stuff to you. And the guy who was in med school, because that dude kept to do one year at, in, in the labs, um, you know, he should have pressure burned. But I'm gonna try. This is really cool because half the time the egg splits when it comes goes in because it goes in so fast if it's not a, a perfect egg. Um, so this might actually work on camera. And anyway, he said Terminator 2 had just come out. So you can see, I was only like three when I was in graduate school. Anyway, Terminator 2 had just come out, and that was the one with the liquid nitrogen when they throw that on the, um, I think it was Arnold, is like a good Terminator now, and he releases it, and the other Terminator, the bad Terminator, gets frozen, but then comes back together as he thaws out. Anyway, um, yeah, there we go. Pretty cool. So as the air is warming up, the pressure is pushing, and the egg's coming up. All right, I am going to stop this. You guys have been a lovely audience for my demos that just took a wee bit longer than usual, and look forward to doing gas laws with you. Bye-bye. Ta-ta.